As your word broken and shared among the sons, Lord, let the be a, let the word, Lord Father, be a sustenance to us, be our strength, and a transformative agent, Lord Father, in our lives. Let your word change our mindsets, change our identity, and restore us back to his original intent and position, Lord Father. Teach us to walk in your ways, to receive your word, to listen intently to your voice, to be able to see, Lord Father, things beyond the natural veil, and to be reestablished in your person, Lord, as we are called to be the body of Christ, to be the church of Jesus Christ, to be the remnants, to be the holy nation, Lord Father. Bring a shift in our paradigm, Lord Father, in our thinking paradigms, Lord, that we do not seek the things of the world, but we imbue, Lord Father, the heavenly things that you have prepared for us beforehand, even before the creation itself. Lord God, we submit and we surrender, Lord Father, all that we are, our very existence, our very purpose, our function in this earth, so that we represent and manifest the one true God, our Lord, our Father, to this world, Lord as the word being released into the atmosphere today, Lord. Let it do the things that you intend it to be done. Because your word, Lord Father, will never return void and now. It always accomplishes what it has been intended to do, Lord. Bring a transformation in our mind in our spirit, in our soul, Lord Father. We bless you, and we bless this gathering and the man of God that we have appointed to bring this word into this atmosphere, Lord. We bless you, and we exalt your name. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Good. Uh, greetings to you from the kingdom of God. It's nice to have you guys back uh, on this platform. It's truly a pleasure and honor to meet you guys uh, weekly uh, to share the word uh, consistently. As you know that bringing the word consistently is not an easy task uh, in these days. Earlier days, it was different. As long as you are you are bringing something not uh, deep. Uh, you bring something with no revelation. It's easier. Those platforms are very active and uh, uh, packed with people. But then we bring uh, revelatory words and presenting a, a season that, that can't be seen with your natural eyes uh, would always be a challenge. Would always be a challenge. So everything... Um, actually will not work for us. It's a ton, It's a very difficult task for us to present the word, to even to hear and understand the word. But we are a small group of people with many others like us in the earth, um, spending our time to sit down, to shut down everything, to hear the word of God, means to hear the heart of God. In our platform, to hear the word of God means hearing the heart of God, not hearing the noise or the sound uh, of someone speaking, but then to hear the intention of the Creator, to hear what He has for mankind. So we are people who are uh, uh, delving, diving, delving in the depth of the sea. We are being trained to uh, 
survive in the depth of the sea. As going up the top of the mountain, you know, certain altitude, a uh, normal human being will suffer to breathe because of the pressure, air pressure, lack of oxygen or oxygen level. Uh, in the same way, you dive in the depth of the sea. Uh, the system that we carry can only sustain us for a certain level of the depth. Uh, but then there are some have unique capability to actually go beyond that and also able to survive under the sea. So it's um, going up the mountain or going down to the depth of the sea. Both speaks about going to, uh, we understanding the intention of the creator. Every religion has been built based on uh, what your natural eyes can see or natural ears, whatever you can hear, this first level. That will not reveal God. That will give an, um, an expression or some idea of who God is. But in order to know him or this God, we have to have we need to attain this unique skill or ability to know the intention of what is saying. So every week I will establish this uh, for us to understand uh, why we are coming together. This platform gives people the ability to go to the depth or to the heights, uh, to beyond the human strength, beyond the human strength. You cannot step into these boundaries depending on your natural strength. Or your from your uh, Bible school training, or your the size of your church, or how famous your ministry is, or how many people you can heal, how much you can prophesy. All these are not sufficient for us to go to the, the heights or the depth of who God is. Mankind have the uh, 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 have failed to uh, express the depth of who God is. We are not there. We are, we are not sufficient. We have no resources. And that's why it is suffering till now. People are all over, running everywhere, uh, not unable to understand this God. But he has been so... He simplified himself when he manifested in the form of a man for mankind to understand him. But even after that, people... Mankind still have uh, difficulty in understanding who God is. That's why they have fallen short of the glory. We have fallen short. That is not fallen short, backslide, fallen away. This fallen short is lost the capability, losing the capability to capture the truth, to capture what is being said. So even after he manifested as man in the earth, walked and roamed the earth and taught many valuable things, People still could not understand. People classify him according to the human understanding. People have the tendency of uh, classifying God according to their own undeveloped mental state. We have the tendency to accept whatever we see, we relate according to our understanding only. So we are all limited people. We, we, don't, we cannot say we are the best because we limit everything according to what we have. Like we have, a, we have a small bowl in our head. Whatever that you're about to pick or take, you can only fill that bowl. You can't go beyond the bowl. That bowl speaks about our mental capacity. That our capacity is such. So even if God were to reveal himself completely, we do not have what it takes to uh, uh, completely comprehend or accept. So that's why this platform is to increase the capacity, not to give Bible knowledge, not to make people uh, to convert, to come into Christianity, uh, or we're doing missions, we want to convert the whole world. All these are distractions. And the current season is to cut that, stop that. We are not pursuing that. We are not part of that economy. We may be, uh, we started from there, but now we are exiting, exodus. We are all in the exodus. We are leaving the dimension. We're leaving the paradigm. We're leaving the Christian lingo, the language, uh, the behavior, the rituals, and all that they have made uh, today is fruitless. Can't bear fruits. 
can't bear fruit. So we are exiting that and we are now entering a new paradigm, new dimension. That's why I've been sharing on the callings of God. It's calling. I've been sharing from the beginning uh, how he calls out his people. It's gathering. So I will read uh, Ezekiel uh, 34, 11 to 17 just to set the meeting on the right platform again. And then I will continue to work in the area of understanding, develop the capacity in our mind. So, um, now let me read the 34.11. Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. Remember last week, I, I read from Jeremiah and Micah. It's all similar, but as it's a repetition throughout every chapter. Why? It's a repetition. Micah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. There's more scriptures. Why is he saying this? Look at it. For thus says the Lord, indeed, now different season, different people, different leaders God is using, but same message. His message has never changed. His cry has never changed. For thus says the Lord God, indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is coming, his scattered sheep. The sheep are not stranded in some wilderness or in some wild territories. These sheep, when you mention sheep, they are scattered. They are all stuck in a particular dimension, an environment where it's supposed to be uh, the environment set for them. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that they are all in so-called a Christian paradigm. God is not seeking his sheep in the wilderness. He's seeking his sheep from his own. And among uh, his, scattered, uh, his, his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and a dark day. Our people, the people of God has been scattered and they are in inaccurate locations where they are unable to nourish themselves, unable to understand, recognize the voice of the true shepherd because they have been trained to hear the voice of their shepherd, the physical shepherd, the shepherd who is supposed to lead them to the owner. The owner is the true shepherd, owner of the flock. So this have not been taught in our circle all our life, in the Christian life. When we mention shepherd, we think he's our pastor. And pastors think that shepherd think they own the flock. Shepherds are appointed workers to mend the flock to feed, to nourish them, to protect them on behalf of the owner of the flock. The church have always missed the owner of the flock. Our preachings are always about the shepherd. And the name of the, the owner we recognize, we, this is the, the, the name that we give him, his name is True Shepherd. The True Shepherd. He is the, he is the appointed one. He is the True Shepherd because he owned the flock. He's also a shepherd. But he appointed someone, a caretaker, to manage the flock. So what happened when he appointed? This shepherd has misled or did not complete the task given and misled his flocks away from the true shepherd. Away from the true shepherd. And that's where the true shepherd comes out and say, indeed, I myself now, I, I given my task, my people, my flocks to you, and now this has happened to them. A tragedy has happened to them, that they are all scattered, and they do not recognize me. So I'm going to step down. I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. I will go out personally and pull them out. As the shepherd seeks out his flock, on the day he is among uh, among the scattered. Sheep. So I will seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. It's a cloudy and dark day. Unable to see. Other definition. Unable to see. They are being pushed or driven into environments where they can't see. 
So what will what will happen to the sheep when they can't see? They will stand there because they are confused. This is a very confused state. Once you switch off the light in a room, everyone in the room will be confused because now they don't know which direction to go. So this season, uh, under the, the appointed shepherds, have become dark and cloudy. These are complaints not from me. These are complaints from above. I place my, my, my flock at your feet, at your, in your hand, and now we have driven them to a, a place where they are, they are living in a very confused state. Are you all with me? Are you all seeing what I'm seeing? Um, the condition of the present church. They are in a very confused, very dull state. When you meet them, when you talk to them, they can't even engage high-level things. They can't even engage the truth. They are suffering. So where they were scattered on a cloudy and a dark day. Cloudy and a dark day. And I will bring them out from, from the peoples and gather them from the, the countries and will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys and in all, all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture and their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel. Keywords are, I will feed them on the high place, higher things. So he's taking them from the cloudy dark places. He's going to bring them to the higher places where he's going to start to transfer new information, higher information. Things that he can people can now finally understand. So we all must understand this. We all must agree. Agreement. Huh? The church has been living in a state where it is cloudy and dark for the longest time. So the true shepherd, the owner of the flocks, is coming down, removing this appointed shepherd first. Then he will seek out his sheep and pull them out, bring them to the higher mountain. The word higher mountain means level of understanding, downpour of higher information. So he's, this is the shepherd, true shepherd. He brings his flocks to a higher place. So let me read again from 13. And I will bring them out. Ezekiel uh, 34, verse 13. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys and in all the Habitat, inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pastures. I'll feed them in good pastures and their fold shall be on the high mountains. And their fold, what is a fold? A place of inhabited. A place where in, you inculcate uh, or inhabit or uh, you, uh, what do you call, uh, you train them. A place where you cultivate a new culture place where you train or renew mind okay so they shall they shall lie down in a good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel so mountains difficult place not a good nice place it is good when you reach the top but the to achieve the height to achieve the height to go to the top, your body goes through a terrible task. Your mind goes through warfare. So, whenever you see the word mountain, it's the place of higher speaking. God speaks, God spoke to Moses at the top of the mountain, right? But you know what Moses had gone through? Uh, it's not properly written. For him to journey up the mountain, that man actually literally died and resurrected. You know, that's the kind of experience he had. To hear what? What, what is a, this place located? What is the purpose of this location? To hear higher speaking. Higher speaking. And that is why we struggle. Whenever you try to achieve that, 
warfare begins. Brutality attacks will come. Demonic attacks will come. Because you have come to a place, you have decided to go to a place to hear clarity, hear higher speakings of God. So, uh, I will feed my flock and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away. Bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. And as for you, O my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I shall judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and goat. Now, all these are very familiar scriptures for us. These are all different levels of people that God has appointed. And uh, also speaking about the state of their mind. I'm using these scriptures, Micah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, to repeat, to read the repetition, instruction from God, using different people, different prophets, different leaders, is bringing back one news, one message. The one message is, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. That means God has come to a place where he's done with all those temporary places that he gave us, or all the appointed leaders, appointed houses, appointed folds that God has appointed. He is done with them. He's coming down personally to seek out his flock, draw them out, and bring them to a higher place. Are you with me? So going to a higher place. So a new season has been dawned where the current church system will not work anymore. The one who's going to put a put it uh, to, to bury it or to shut it down is God himself. This is not a task of a man. This is a task of God. Where he decided to come and remove the caretaker and take the position of the caretaker to start giving direct care. I have to say this every week to repeat because this, this subject is on remnants. Remnants are chosen one, called out once, called out for a reason. There is a meaning for called out once, called out from somewhere, called into something. Call into something, into is a word, is to form. The word into is being formed. Called into, called out once, deform, and called into, to be formed. To be formed. So he called us to come to a particular location uh, to be formed. So God's flock, the house of God, God's fold, the word church, ecclesia, everything means one thing called out once. Called out once, that means you are uh, formed wrongly. I'm going to pull you out, deform, and I'm going to form you according to my image call into the whole ministry the whole work of the 66 book in the earth is to gather the pasture form them into Christ according to Christ keep that in mind whatever ministry you're doing wherever you're going whatever wherever if anyone invites you if you need to share you are sitting down among a people your first mission the most difficult mission is to call them out Bring them to a place of a deform, deformity. To deform the, 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 the mentality that unable to hear the depth of what is being said. Everything is about word. Everything is about word. In the beginning was the word. Nothing else. The one mission that we have is to under, hear, discern, understand. Apply the word. This is the office that God has set for us. We are from that office. That's why I say now I'm operating from the office. If I my if you say if I'm from the fivefold, what are you? Which office are you operating? I'm operating the office of a teacher to teach. Why I like teaching? Because it's word related, word related and mind related. Jesus has been known as a good teacher, Rabbi, good teacher. He was not known as, he wasn't, uh, was introduced as the prophet, apostle, anything, but he was introduced as what? 
rabbi. His office that he operated as a rabbi, as a teacher, he was here to correct the way people think. A teacher is the one who brings correction to the mind. A teacher is someone who teaches how to think. A teacher is someone who teaches you how to arrange your thoughts. Because everything begins and formed in your mind before manifestation. So if you if you if you place things in your mind correctly and allow it to be formed in your mind, whether it's good or bad, I'm telling you, it's going to manifest in your body, through your body. So our biggest task or challenge is to, um, to bring correction to our mind. So Jesus is the biggest teacher, the best. Uh, he's a rabbi. And you can see whoever operated in that um, caused majorship. Apostle Paul is one, I think, the best after him. He was the one. He's also known as a rabbi. He used his very powerful teachings to change the mind of people. I'm speaking to a group of teachers. All of you are teachers. You are not ordinary teachers to give Bible stories. We are here to bring correction into the mind. It's like, you know where you bring correction? In this platform? We will journey back into the Garden of Eden. We are journeying back because that is the first tragedy that took place there in the mind of Adam. In the mind of Adam. Because Adam's mind was well-trained uh, by the Spirit of God to carry the things of God and to manifest in the earth. Are you with me? So, the, the tragedy took place in the Garden of Eden. So, if anyone wants to bring correction to the now, we need to journey all the way back into the Garden of Eden and look at the mind of Adam. We must hold his head like that and look into his mind. What happened at the fall? What happened at the fall? Hamartia happened. Sin. Sin entered his mind. Hamartia. Hamartia means missing the mark. Missing the mark means missing a very key mandate and responsibility or instruction given. He missed it means he not forgot it. It's not about forgetting. He missed it means he failed to understand he failed to understand the mandate. He misunderstood the mandate. He had a problem in understanding it. He failed to understand it. That is the worst tragedy happened to mankind. We don't go here and there. We don't go here and there. Until today, people have a problem understanding God. You bring anything and say this has happened, that the people will believe. But if you come and present the true creator, of heaven and earth and the whole of humanity. If you present him to someone, people don't want to accept him the way he is. Nobody would believe that if God were to say, I'm God. I'm your father. I'm the one created. I created you to carry my image. But today you can't accept me, can't understand me. Your mind is so far from me. Your mind is so far from me. The people whom you love could not understand you. No matter how much you have done, no, what kind of feeling is that? You have labored day and night and they could not recognize you, but they can recognize every other people come, came into your life. They can give the rights to somebody else, but not you. So the whole of mankind have failed God by not able to hear him or understand him. Are you all with me? My teachings are going to be very heavy. My, my speakings are going to be very heavy. It's going to really make you feel very tired because I'm speaking into your spirit. So we have to go back to the beginning and bring correction to the mind of the first man. Because the first man is a template for the rest of the mankind. We have to journey all the way to that. Study the mind of the fallen. I, I shared last week, I think, what's the definition of fallen? Unable to understand. What is the definition of fallen man? Unable to understand, unable to hear. Root problem. Root problem. 
டூ இப்ப நம்ம எந்த இடத்துக்கு போனாலும் நம்ம வீட்டுக்கு போனாலும் we go back to our ministry or any country that we travel we have some even business even work all occupation is sorry all professionalism professional work le parunga the biggest task is to teach what we carry helping others to understand you can't go away from this to hear and understand every employee that joins you have to hear you and understand your vision and plan and the task given to the person and that person will start to practice if the person doesn't learn he won't practice across all platforms then our platform le vandha and the top responsibility was given to the church the body i am not talking about christianity the church is not part of christianity <laughs> don't get me wrong whenever i say church don't think christianity the church is a body belongs to christ it does not represent christianity so when i say church we are the church uh, but we are not we are not announcing christianity christianity is a concept christianity has become a religion christianity has become a place like or color mariyadhi amidhiya theri poranga anga povanga saadara seiravanga anga poi seira mattaanga saadikiravanga anga pova mattaanga setthu ponavanga da kalari povanga if you go to christianity christianity can provide that peace uh where the surface level peace is like uh, like a graveyard a lot of people like to go to the cemetery to hang out because it's so peaceful so quiet they really try and walk take a walk at one of the cemeteries uh, that's christianity has become that with no life looks good looks beautiful very peaceful nice music but then there's no life but the church of christ carries life eternal life life that will break you forth break the coffin break the graveyard and take you out resurrection so we are pursuing there i'm training you those who are joining us faithfully i'm training your mind for you to go to a level of capturing who this god is he's very interesting person i used the word person huh? by right i cannot describe him as a person um he's very interesting person and human mind cannot comprehend okay human mind can never comprehend this god he himself is not comprehensible if you cannot comprehend if i can use the word he cannot be com- uh, understood is because not because he is not revealing himself is because our our understanding is limited why our understanding is limited because we are raised in such environment it's because of environment that's why i say i that's why he's saying that i myself will search my my sheep and seek them out as a shepherd seeks his flock on the day he is coming and uh, scattered sheep so i will seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places places all the uh, inaccurate locations where you are unable to perceive god those environment not help you helping you to have the capacity in your mind for you to understand him so he is complicated today because we have a complicated mind god is complicated because we have a complicated mind but without knowing him mankind can never come to its fullness in the earth in the earth so we are one hope we becoming one with the many that god has called that we going to train ourselves we going to stop every other don't don't look at uh, uh, you know whenever i meet christian people they talk about these unnecessary matters and in the kalathile enna sendikirukkaru what is the next thing god is moving here this anointing that anointing this movement that movement apostolic season has been now coming to an end so new season they are busy looking for a new season valuable illa thonga new season therikkanga so they will make it a brand then they will market they carry this banner and then all the other crazy people run after every platforms platforms after platforms but life has not been transformed jesus ministry was only 3 years 3 years 
apostolic platforms are there for 20, 30 years. They are still telling the same stories, repeating after repeating. Can't raise, can't impact the church, uh, impact the earth, can't impact even your own city. People are terrified looking at the Christian people. People are running away. In India, people are being whacked, beaten up. And these poor innocent people, they're going, they try to preach the gospel. They are being uh, uh, brutalized. They're innocent people, you know. It's the church. The leader who sits inside and send the people out. He hides inside in a safe place. Making a lot of money. Do you know that we are not supposed to make money? Do you know, shepherds, we, we are not supposed to make money. We are not supposed to touch a penny. It's not a money-making industry. I've, I've shared about all this stuff. So there is an audit taking place from above. So God wants his house to be a house where uh, it's a house of discernment. House of discernment. You and I are the house of discernment. So when he speaks, we like to do this. We, we, we stand in front of him like this and we hear. We take time. It can take years for me to, uh, for God to form, a, a, for God to throw a message into my spirit. And it, it, it may take years to be completely formed and then God will give me the vocab to speak. It may take years. I know what I'm going through. I know what I'm going through. The moment the seed falls into my spirit, everything inside me shatters. Everything I plan to do shatters. Every path that I'm, I'm planning to, I decided to go, shifts. And I don't know why. I feel, I thought I'm, I'm, I'm so stagnant. But then, once the seed that falls from the Spirit of God into your spirit, it will change everything. We are not being stagnant, but we are being redirected. Are you with me? We are redirected. We are not stagnant people. We are very serious people. We are very cautious people. We are, have set our mind to hear His voice and His voice only. We are not here to follow the appointed shepherd. We are here to hear the true shepherd's voice in the appointed shepherd. If the appointed shepherd is doing otherwise, you have to discern and cut that pursuit to the true shepherd. Uh, this is a violation that we have to do. People will say this Logan is teaching wrong stuff. No, I will tell even my own children, I will tell even anyone. If you are if you are if you are with a good leader, you will never be stagnant. If you are stagnant, then you have all the right to find your way. Because I was one of them in my early days. I started to pray. I asked God, show me your voice, show me. I need you. I, I'm done with all this. I'm not a tool in their hands. I want to be the tool or weapon in your hand, Lord. Take me away. Come and pull me out from all these flocks, these fools. And then he came out. He's coming out to pull us out. So there are many, many people going to come out of this system in the coming days. By the end of this year, there's going to be a great shake. Great shake. And many will fall out of all those systems, folds. And they're looking for a true shepherd in the voice of a appointed shepherd. We could be the appointed shepherds. But we must carry the voice of a true shepherd. Are you with me? We must learn the art of being a representation of my master or our master. We cannot bypass what he has instructed. That's the discipline that we need to be. We cannot say what we feel like or what is right for us. Our life journey and experience should not be taught to the flock. How you have done your ministry, how you have journeyed, how God has touched your life, how many lives you have touched, all these stories must not be transferred to the flock. The only thing that you are allowed to transfer is the life of the true shepherd. His accomplishment, his mindset, his mandate, how he see things, we got to transfer. Maybe we might have some great stories in our life. It's completely irrelevant to what God has given us. We need to be very strict in this area. We operate like a very powerful government. 
that came from above, that I'm here in your life only to give you the true shepherd. I am building myself in such a way that I, I will not bypass that stage. That's why there's no personal uh, advice. If you want to ask for my opinion about something, I can share with you. But my purpose in your life is to transfer the true shepherd and die. Die is die when I say that, depart. Gone, finish, it's over. My job is over. Why? Because I have to say this because everybody wants to take position in your life and they want to um, they want to become the God of your life. Nobody can do that. So we need to become that platform. Okay, so I myself will search. So God is, is out and dragging and pulling out, shutting down operations, shutting out ministries, shutting down ministers. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of pastors are passing away. Every day, every week, I'm seeing more and more. And the, these flocks are now stranded. They will search, they will search, they will seek, and they will look for uh, appointed, an appointed shepherd who carries the voice of a true shepherd. And write this down. Just write this statement the true flock will seek a, a, an appointed shepherd to seek the voice of the true shepherd. The appointed shepherds are not the owner of the flock. The owner of the flock appoints a shepherd to represent the true shepherd. So that's where the whole misunderstanding. The church leaders, pastors, they think the people belong to them. My people, my flock. You don't recognize me. You don't come to me. Bad things will happen to you. All these are completely unethical statements and you don't have to fall for all this threat. All this threat doesn't work because you have a father, you have a shepherd, a true shepherd above. If anything, he, if anything anyone can do, only he can do. Not the appointed shepherd. The appointed shepherd has got no authority over the flock. No other authority. He, has, doesn't, he doesn't have the right over the flock. He's a caretaker on behalf of. The true apostolic season is supposed to bring the people out of this condition and bring them back to Christ. But the apostolic platform also locking people up under a different tone. They change the tone. More aggressive. More aggressive. More eloquent. That's all. Early days, pastors can't speak properly. They speak lame and emotional language. And then apostolic, all the charismatic season came in. They changed their style. And now apostolic use more eloquence. That's all. Nothing much. They are good with words. They can dress up well. They change their tone and quote scriptures and keep you in the prison. They can't set you free. And that's the sad thing. Because I, I was from the normal season and I entered the apostolic season. I found good men. I found good men, outstanding leaders, man. I won't, I'm not putting that down. I saw, because I, I was released in that season. My mind was open in that season. True, true men of God. You know, there are, there are several authentic operations in the earth. But there are also, but there are more um, counterfeit. Counterfeit out there. They are, they are good mimicry artists. They can mimic the seasons of God. They can mimic what the other true apostles are doing. So what's the difference? How are you going to know? Productive. <laughs> Under a true apostle, we will be very productive. Under a true apostolic season, the flock will grow and nourish and will not fall sick. But the sad thing is, it's not easy to recognize and understand a true apostle because they are not cultured according to human, human mind. They don't look like ordinary people. They don't behave like ordinary people. They don't have a need to sell them out, sell themselves out. They don't need to market themselves. True apostles are people moving like ghosts, like ghosts. No one can see them, but you can feel and you can feel uh, uh, their presence. When you sit with them, you will know who are the true apostles, who are the true sons of God. 
So uh, this apostolic season has also uh, misguided many away. Today is set. So uh, God is God is arranging, activating a new initiative. I think this is the platform. Um, someone asked me, what is this all about? I said, it's a platform, a season to teach the people, bring them back to the classroom to correct their mind. Okay? So once again, I just read that and I go into the other scriptures. For thus says the Lord God, indeed I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. I place this word into your spirit. You have to dwell in that. You've got to understand your master is saying, I'm coming back to take my flock. Get yourself prepared because I'm going to bring them to you. And you will be my judge, my representation, my appointed shepherd, my voice. One responsibility is carry the voice of the true shepherd. The voice carries DNA. Whenever I use the word voice, voice coming up from the mouth, voice speaks about the DNA. Transfers what is in the DNA, in the system. So we carry the voice of the true shepherd means we carrying the attributes or transferring the attributes of the true shepherd to your flock. We have no ownership over the flock. We have no rights over the flock. We have no authority over the flock. What we have is delegated authority. Delegated responsibilities. Whatever being said, we will go and tell or we share to the flock and say this is information from above. I'm passing it to you. Remember the first opening I say whether you receive or you refuse is up to you. I bring the word to you. You can receive or refuse. It's your call. Even God says that. It's your call. Well, so he's gathering uh, people, but it's also preparing a people. A people will be known as appointed shepherds who are able to operate in the fivefold. The fivefold tool will be given to these shepherds. The ability to train the flock. Do you know all the fivefold? If you listen carefully and study the fivefold, all the fivefold will train the mind. Of the flock towards Christ. Make sense? Fivefold tool has been given to repair the brain, the mind, to bring the flock back to Christ. All five. But we have been here for the longest time, we've been hammered with fivefold ministry. But as this tool is not working, so I'm throwing away all the tools that was brought in by Christian Paradigm. We are now seeking the Spirit of God for new tools. So when someone asks me, uh, what are we in the fivefold? Um, I am not going to announce myself part of a tool. Tools are given to repair something. I am the skillful person. But to finish my work, I need my tools. Fivefold are the tools. So what, who am I? What am I? So... In the fivefold, we are known as sons of God. We are known sons of God, having the fivefold within our system, able to bring redemption. So I shared with you what is the definition of a son. A son is not a male, a male uh, child of a father. The word son there uh, speaks about there is roles and responsibility. The one who has been created to carry the creator and manifest the creator to all creation. So it's a gender-free word. So a son is an appointed system in the earth to manifest the father. So the fivefold will be given, will be seen in the son. The appointed shepherd. The, in the same manner, who is the father? Father is not a, a male uh, person. The definition according to the scripture, that what we need to unpack, understand. The, the word father means it's a system. 
and it's a source. It's a system and a source. That have the power to manifest itself and to multiply. Look at that. You see that way, uh, your whole mind will change. And we that's the operation that we 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 are experiencing, but we are not talking about it. It's a source and a system, right? And have the power to multiply itself. So it transfers into a sun. And the sun is the carrier into the natural dimension from the spiritual dimension. Are you all clear? Easy to understand? So what is a church? Appointed sun. Appointed sun. To carry the DNA, the seed. <laughs> to carry the seed, the sperma, the seed. And then give birth to sons of God. <laughs> oh my God. If you see this, you will, you, you, if you were to set up the house church and use this model to have a small group of people and you operate in this manner, that household will be extremely dangerous. <laughs> now your little children will be very wise. Little boys, little, children, little kids, your daughters, you know how they will be when you teach them this, that Dino son, you have been created to carry what other ordinary human being cannot carry. Your mind has been designed to carry unbelievable, unfathomable things. Our mind has been designed. Our brain is capable of carrying that. But we have a fallen mind. But look at the... the uh, go and study brain. Go and study brain. You know, we say, yes, as I say, that we're only using 3% of our mind. The brain. Cap capability. 3%. What happened to the rest? Why? You need to have a mind to make full use of the brain. So the mind that we are discussing about is the mind of Christ. What can give you the mind of Christ? The 66 book. How does it give you? What this 66 book? It gives the understanding, the revelation of the mind of God. The more you learn how to unpack the word of God, the more information that will be transferred to your mind. And your mind will start to reconstruct your brain. And your brain will use your body to manifest God. Indoor objective of Walagatra Yar Mis Punalo, Yenda Madhatra Irindalo, God will not be seen. God wants to be seen. God wants to manifest. So all of us have got a, a good mind. All of us have a good mind. Now here in this platform. Now what's our mind? The mind is seeking for the true image of our father through the studies. No Christian obligation, Christian rituals, your holy communion that you partake, uh, your water baptism, um, your tithes and offering. All this is not going to change your mind. Do you know what's the purpose of all these rituals? Is to teach you something. But today we are doing everything with no understanding. No understanding. Unable to understand. Do you understand why you do this every week? So what the important is, what you do, what is the meaning, why are you doing this question, why are you doing this? So just pick any Christians, you know, go and ask them. Like church and Holy Communion, Holy Communion, Holy Communion, you will be very disappointed. Correct? So, everything about God is for us to pursue and understand Him. What is He saying? 
because he has decided to manifest to us in the natural dimension. Our mission is that he must manifest, manifest himself in a human body. So your body is the temple. You are, his, you are the, the temple. You are his body. We are his body. So what is the ministry? Bring the revelation here. Reconstruct your mind. Manifest in this body. Whether you bring people to Christianity, whether you're attending church every week, it doesn't matter. Why we need to attend church every week? Because if this is the objective, we need to attend every week. What is the objective of coming together? That's why today I'm asking some Christians who are very active in the apostolic platform also. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And oh, we are now going into this teaching. We are going into that teaching. This, What are you doing? I'm asking them. What do you achieve? You spend all your life, all your money, or you sacrifice many good programs and events, and then you go in. So what are you doing there? End of the day, what are you going to do? What, what do you achieve? You're becoming part of a system. You're manifesting that system. But if you have Christ in you, you will not be bound by a system. You will be available for everyone. That is the economy of the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit. I Just bear in mind, I, I don't really use the word Holy Spirit. Because that word has been, has been taken out of context in the Christian paradigm. So I use the word Spirit of God. Spirit of God. What the? How is the Spirit of God operating? No one can see it, see Him, but everyone can feel Him and experience Him, and He's everywhere. A true Son of God must be able to operate in such a manner. I don't have to be in one location, but wherever I go, my Father is sensed, and people will feel God. Now, this I'm going to train you guys. Reconstruct the way you think. We're going to educate your mind that you will become a school. Your mind will become a school where we teach and train your mind the expressions of God through studying the 66 books. And one day when I start teaching you about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, you will understand that it's not a celestial light, powerful light that comes and touches you and you shake and you fall. The Spirit of God is... Have you seen the matrix? The matrix, the, the codes. Well, that's the Spirit of God, a picture, a proper picture. He is all code. Codes. Not Q U uh, O eight uh, T. not that code. It's C-O-D-E. Coding is code, full of information. The Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit is full of information from, uh, uh, from an infinite location. The location is infinite. No one can go there, but that can come to us. We can't go to him. Only he can come to us. That's why you can read the scripture. Context will be very good. He cannot come until there is a place in the earth. The dove that flew came back because he has got no place to land. But the day the dove brought a leaf, it's an information. Now he can ascend. The Spirit of God needs a location to ascend. The location is a mind that abides to the Word of God. It is a qualification. Someone who loves the Word of God. I love the Word of God, but I don't understand. I don't understand, but I love the Word of God. Now that qualifies you for Him to interfere. So the quotes will start to come in. The matrix quotes will start to come inside. And adjust the way you see, think, and everything will change. You become absolutely silent in your human training. And then you start to speak the voice of God. One word will shatter a city. One word. So who's the Spirit of God? He's quotes. Coding. Quotes. System that will come and affect the way you think. And you will now, for the first time in human body, will experience infinity. 
infinity. That means there's no end, no beginning, no end. And that's the name they gave to Jesus. That's the name was given to many men in the world. One of them I'm so fascinated with is Enoch. He, he walked with God and he was no more. This guy was completely absorbed, <laughs> completely absorbed by God. And till the, the English word says he was no more. Yes, I would like to say the same thing about myself. I walked with God and I was no more. So you see that, so we'll teach, I'm, I'm, I'm going to decode the quotes from above. Now, it is Sadhana Vartala, it's not an um, easy task. I tell you, I, I've, since I stepped in this boundary, I'm living in a location called death. I shared in my first or second meeting that I'm living in an environment of death. I smell death every day. It's a difficult location. Because when you have a higher calling, everything around you will turn against you. And you must learn to stand and change that environment by allowing the voice and the eternal life of God to interfere in the environment through us. God cannot impact the earth without us. Right? That God cannot fulfill or impact the earth without true vessels. We are now being or becoming or wanting to become or desiring to become a true vessel of God. True vessel means true means truth. A vessel that has the capacity or loves truth. He loves truth. You got to love the truth. You don't worry about anything else. Just tell yourself every time, tell your mind, I love the truth. Who is the truth? The word. Who is the word? Our Father. The creator. He's listening to us now. He's watching us now. He's hearing every of my statements. I'm standing in a platform where I can't speak what I desire to speak. I can't speak what I want to speak. I can't even speak what I need to speak. Completely out of control. I, I, that means I'm not in power. I need him to take over me and speak. Use my mouth. Use my voice to speak to you. And what's the objective? You can listen to all my teachings, all my YouTube teachings. I, want, I only lead people to Christ. I'm not interested about anything else. I'm not even interested in knowing people. I'm not a people person. I used to be. And people have taught me lesson. <laughs> I'm not a people person. I'm an appointed person. Appointed by God. To transfer God. So that's your journey. Why am I saying all this? Because your journey is going to be just like that. You're going to become the vessel of God. People will never come to know God through your speaking. They will come to know you through your behavior. Through your life. How you set environment. How your homes are set your house, your office, your work, your behavior, your marriage, your relationship, all these will unveil Christ. That's how people will come to know there's a God. How you manage your finance, everything will reveal a culture that you are a person very closely related to this divine power. You are different, you are unique. Okay, so this platform, one of our key responsibility to our platform, last week I was sharing what is a lack in the Christian paradigm. Understanding. Understanding. Wisdom is the logos. Wisdom is the whole account. Wisdom is the word, the plans of wisdom. Knowledge and understanding. Knowledge is the information. It's the information. To achieve the information. And understanding. Once you come to understanding, you are able to manifest it. Purunjik Takaring Lada number sale
you can never activate something that you don't understand. Are you with me? Correct? So, what is the one powerful tool we all need? Understanding. Under, we are doing, um, uh, I'm doing a write-up, we are doing a write-up, a tool or a manual on understanding. So, I will train you guys through a forum or maybe we can do a seminar in Malaysia. We will do that. This must be placed as a, your profession your profession, professional tool. Wherever you go, you must give the people the ability to understand, not the Bible. Not the Bible. What's the point you give a Bible to a blind person or a deaf person? Doesn't work. So what do you need to give the person the ability to see? காதுள்ளவன் <laughs> So what is the ability? You don't have to give them the Bible. I, we are not here to teach the Bible. Very bold. I am not here to teach you the Bible. I am here to teach you the, give you, teach and give you the ability to understand. Information or knowledge you are now wasting your time. Take your child, little boy in your house, five, six, seven years old. Talk to him about the technicality of your job. He will give you a blank look. Why? I can hear you, mommy, but I don't understand. Isn't that the position of the church now? Isn't that the position of many people in the world? Or all the religion in the world, they can't hear. And what is that to understand? So what's the strength of this house? We will be specially skilled to give people understanding. School of understanding. School of understanding. You are the school of understanding. It's very deep stuff, huh? Very deep. So now I'm collecting you from everywhere, putting you guys out from every other platform, dragging you out, bringing you to a place, and I'm putting you on a throne. And the throne name is understanding. Jesus came into the earth throughout all his gospels. Whenever he spoke, please go and pay attention. He said, Do you understand? Go and read. Do you understand? Can your mind comprehend? And they could not understand. They crucified him. So when you bring understanding, remember crucifixion is... <laughs> you cannot avoid. Cannot avoid. Because people have got lack in understanding. You try to cry out. You try to say. That's why nowadays I don't really talk much. <clears throat> I meet people. I let them talk. I hear. Because in theory, I don't have to talk about it. I waste my time. Based on my time and wasting, I will put unnecessary pressure on someone who's not willing to hear and understand. So I speak less. And I bring myself down to their level to communicate. I will not speak from where? The throne. I'll come down from the throne to engage them, to find what is their condition, and I'll start to adjust. Adjust, adjust, adjust uh, according uh, uh, to their level. Now, in, now on the level, hearing you are on the level, to serve on hearing you are you understand? You want to serve something, a big chunk of meat. You serve to an adult. And Pakatil on the or a seven-year-old boy or Kandraka. Or six-year-old girl or Kandraka. And the chunk of steak and apri sepanamdira. So I have to go and dissect it or grind it, bring burger patty marikonan kurukla. So palatable for the little child. So what I do, 
I come down from there, I'll find, understand their condition, but I still bring my tool, my material to in a way that is palatable for them. Are you with me? So don't ever engage everyone. Don't engage everyone. Even could be an elder in your, in your ministry, elder in your church, or some elder from some other ministry. Elders are people are, are, are indoctrinated in the doctrine of Christ. It's a definition. If someone comes and says, I'm an elder in the ministry and not indoctrinated in the doctrine of Christ, buy a kite. Patton, the remark, patton. Fly. Kite. Kurutu kaila kurutu go and fly kite. These are clowns and they are not representing uh, the kingdom of God. Because we have more uh, elders, powerful guys from big professions, big earners, very rich people that are chosen to be elders in most of the Christianity, Christian churches. And because they are very reputable in the society, they put them as elders with no doctrinal experience. Now, that is sad. That is sad. Today, most of the committee organization, they choose rich people only because they think rich people are sadhi டாக்டர்ஸ் <laughs> So sorry. So sorry. A true son of God is not known by all this stuff. He carries the, the fragrance of his father. That's enough, right? That's enough. That's why you look at all my, my things. My, my, I, there's no title for me. I'm Michael Logan. I change everywhere. Michael Logan. I even tell people not to call me pastor. Onga comfortable can call me sir you can call me mr michael you can call me logan you know how you are relating with me i'm okay with that because i'm a nobody i only am a vessel my name will be given by the spirit i carry jesus life is correct na nanjichu therima our prayer is jesus christ christ is the name of the father vaanga poda nama prayer la apdi da irukku logan christ அது நம்ம வைக்க முடியாதுங்க அது வந்து கூப்பிடுற பேர் இல்லை அது உங்களோட நடத்தையை பார்த்து வரக்கூடிய ஒரு அடையாளம் ஸோ வி ஆல் ஹேவ் அ கிரைஸ் இன் அவர் நேம் அண்ட் வி மஸ்ட் ஹேவ் அ கிரைஸ் இன் அவர் நேம் ஸோ வி காட் சேஞ்ச் தேட் சேட்லி வி ஆர் த பீப்புள் ஹியர் டு புட் இன் ஹேண்ட் டு த கிறிஸ்டியானிட்டி ஆர் க்ளோசிங் த சாப்டர் வி ஆர் க்ளோசிங் த சீசன் அண்ட் தேன் வி ஆர் லான்ச்சிங் அ நியூ சீசன் இன் கிரைஸ் ஓகே வி ஆர் நாட் we are not christians we are remnants remnant vamsa yaroda christ we are remnants of christ okay i'm going to read continue to work on for another 15 minutes so read too heavy psalms 119 verse 130 119 and verse 130 okay the unfolding of your words gives light it imparts understanding to the simple see there's a formula there there's a formula there the unfolding of your words gives light what is the key word here unfolding of your words give light need to focus on the word light light is what understanding you unfold the word when you unpack the word that mean what are you doing you going into the intention of what is being spoken if you you cannot have understanding if you are unable to un- uh, go into the depth of what's being said i'm repeating all this again and again guys because i want you all to master the skill what is being said what is michael logan saying throughout his platform in his platform there is a cry within me for people to hear and understand their own father all of them 
I can't change your life, huh? but the voice of the Lord will change your life. So if a good man who wants to do good to you, what will he do? He will come and give you the ability to hear the voice of God. Correct? Once, I give, once you start hearing the voice, what will happen? My operation ends. His operation begins. <laughs> I don't want to work hard. I don't want to work long. You come with me maybe one, two years. I teach you and train you to hear. And he steps in, I step off. The appointed shepherd steps out. The true shepherd steps in. Are you with me? Interesting, right? So the unfolding of your words gives light. Understanding. Wow. It imparts, again, understanding to the simple. Simple gravati rata na trima. Having a certain level of capacity to understand only. Simple minded na, solo kude kariyata, Simple minded. I'm a simple minded person. I'm a simple minded person. I'm a simple minded person. I'm a simple minded simple minded Simple minded people know the definition. They, they, will, they will not establish the true doctrine. They will not labor in the true doctrine of Christ. There's only one doctrine we have. Huh? Doctrine of Christ. Everything is found inside in this doctrine of who Christ is. So don't have to talk about any other doctrine. You can write off everything. Nothing is working. Okay. So simple-minded people, people who are unable to access into the depth of who God is. Weak mindset. They have been raised in an environment where uh, they shallow-minded people. You give them worship. You give them food, you give them church uh, uh, caroling or Christmas party, uh, you ask them to pray, come for prayer meeting, uh, 40 days fasting meeting. But when you start to speak divine information, they will fall asleep. They will give excuse. That's why a lot of people don't study the word, they just listen to what pastors say and repeat what pastors say. They don't have personal revelation. Because they're simple-minded people. But a developed-minded person will ask questions to understand. People don't ask questions in the church because they want to challenge the ministers. The only reason we ask questions, you should be asking questions for you to have deeper understanding. If you have a political mind, you question a leader to go and like how the Pharisees question Jesus. They did not question Jesus to understand what he was saying. They question Jesus and say, hey, this is not your place. Who are you? You're trying to uh, brainwash my people. You're trying to bring the, uh, uh, you want to disrupt our operation. And then he started to ask questions to trap him. Now that's a different way of asking questions. But we, the true people, the simple-minded, uh, when a simple-minded person starts to ask questions, is for them to have increased the capacity to understand. And that's where ministers get angry and they will crush them. How dare you ask me? Uh, why you ask, all these are irrelevant to you. They will say such words. Because they want to keep us under. When I'm pulling and then I'm going to say, you don't need to ask all these questions. You just shut up and do what I ask you to do. We won't do that. We will try to think and get the answer. We sit down, we explain. Now that's the spirit a true house will have. And if they are not giving you that, they are not sure what they are doing. They are afraid of you. So my point is, if you are simple, we all came from a simple-minded environment, Christian environment. But now somehow the hunger and the hunger for the word of God has increased our capacity to learn, to learn. So we are seeking for understanding. So when you seek for understanding, what you will do? You will ask questions. You will ask questions to yourself. You will ask questions to the word. You'll ask question to your spiritual leaders. So when someone comes asks us questions, a true leader will understand this person's capacity to hear and understand has increased. Number one. Number two, a person come and ask question. I know this person is here to challenge my position. 
coming with the wrong spirit. Some people come with the wrong spirit to challenge you. You don't have to give them an answer. Let them challenge you. Don't need to answer. Why? I can't answer your abrupt and corrupted mind. But I'm always available to answer a genuine question. Come from a sincere heart. <laughs> you see that? Okay. So, the unfolding of your word gives light. That means ability to understand. It imparts what? Second thing, imparts what? Understanding. The other word for understanding is able to apply. Able to apply. Having the skill to apply. Or even the word manifestation. Manifested. If you read, buy something, you need to fix it. You got to read the manual. If you buy something complicated, to fix it, you got to read the manual. Once you read the manual, something will be given to you. What is that? The ability to fix it. Manifest. Apply. So what was complicated because of understanding, now no longer complicated, now you can apply it. It's working for you now. The word of God is not working for a lot of people because it doesn't have the tool called understanding. Hebrew 4.12 for the word of God is living and active. <laughs> Take a moment, huh? think. For the word of God is living <clears throat> and active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrows and discerning the thoughts discerning the thoughts and intention of the heart. Now, this is the entire activation of your whole system if only you can understand. You see, the word here, for the word of God is living and active. I always will say that God has been consistent in his speaking and is very active, ready to come into us, activate. So, and then you read the scripture, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing. The word piercing is piercing through your undeveloped mind. Your carnal mind. The lack of the lack in understanding. Piercing through all that. To division, to the division of soul and of the spirit. It will come and dissect and separate all responsibility within. Of joints and marrow, physical body. Now, this is about it. And discerning the thoughts and intention of heart. It's not here, heart. When we say the word heart, we are the definition of the mind. Mind. Brain is what? The organ inside. Heart is mind. Your school. Mind is your school. Where you train. Mind is your school. See? Now, the, for the word of God, is living and active sharper. You have to read this again and again. Every word must become a form, a form in your mind. Because in our Christian paradigm, this scripture has been taught wrongfully to us. No revelation. I know many pastors are still using it. They would have a good picture. Any good thing, only good thing. Why love other good to know? You see how so beautiful for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword. Why it need to pierce two dimensions, two dimensions, heaven and earth, spirit and soul. The word of God has got the power to touch both dimensions. At the same time, you saw this happening in this Jesus' life. Both dimension was touched. Sharper than two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of the marrow, 
and discerning the thoughts and intention of your of the mind. Apa, in conclusion, the word of God, if you allow the word of God to come inside you, it will organize your house. Yeah, your mind. It will come and dissect, clean up, tidy up. Whatever need to be discarded, it will be discarded. It will bring order. And then finally, discerning the thoughts and intentions. Puri da. Okay. Last scripture. John 16 and 13. When the spirit of truth comes. See, this is another name for the Holy Spirit. We don't use the word Holy Spirit. Sorry, it's not a wrong name. But Christians have taken it out of context. So here, nice. When the spirit of truth. Define what you want. Spirit of truth. Spirit sonale speaking about behavior, personality. Right? Spirit of truth. So, what is the spirit carries? Unveils truth. Who is truth? The one and only. So, what is the spirit of truth? It, the other mandate to unveil the invisible creator. Spirit of truth. Truth is the name of God. When the spirit of truth comes, now you see, now the whole scripture will make sense with this my mindset. He will guide you into all the truth that has been set for us. That was spoken through the mouth of Jesus. That has been spoken through the prophets, men and women God used. Okay? He will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. Apana is bringing something. He is a representation of something that we can't touch. I put the Sula, the Yah, God, the Yah, the beginning of the Alpha. Uh, so, the platform set for us doesn't have the rights to to say what it likes, but the platform has to be have been set to reveal from the yeah. So he doesn't come on his own authority. It's not about the literal authority of the he is not there to establish his, his government, but he has come to establish the Father's government. It's something very deep. One day we'll talk about the Yah operation. Okay? Um, he will not speak on his own, uh, his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Uh, here you see the whole operation of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three dimension. When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you. If the Yaris will write that, in the Vata Yarasuna, Jesus said to His disciples, right? When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. Whatever that I am the Word. Today, you have seen the Word, you heard the Word, you experienced the Word. But now, the another season will be coming where the spirit of truth will come and reveal what I spoke. What will happen once he reveals what he spoke? So, Holy Spirit of God, what is his daunting task that he has to give us understanding of the word? Jesus is the word. We got to seek out the intention. That's what I'm doing. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. I am, the word is the truth. He is the truth. Jesus, Jesus is the truth. But he said, but in order for you to comprehend what I'm saying, that's why a lot of people don't understand him. That's why you can't just read the Bible scriptures and quote. Wait for him to come. What he will do? He will unveil. Allah and Mother, the Spirit of God is what quotes information. He is a system. So when he comes and ascends, he will take all ref uh, uh, references from the life of Jesus and he will unpack the mysteries. Okay, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. 
and he will declare to you that things are true. So another point that I always will tell that the Spirit of God will not speak anything apart from the 66 books, appointed 66 books. There are more books written by others who observed, truly observed what was, happen what was happening and wrote many other books. But only 66 have been chosen by the Spirit. That's why he doesn't speak on his own authority. He can't speak on his own authority. There are many good men and women who wrote more information. But he cannot choose everything on his own authority, approved authority. Whatever Jesus has done in the earth, the Spirit of God can operate through that level only. Try to understand. So he cannot speak apart from the 66 book. He had to subject himself to the 66 book. That's why he came first. The Spirit of God is subjected to the 66. But today, <laughs> all the pastors and leaders and so-called people, they speak from uh, more. They add more. They are not subjected. Going here, prophet. Singapore, we have a lot of prophets who are parrots. Malaysia, a lot of parrots claiming to be prophets. Thus says the Lord. But they're not related. They, what, coming, what comes out of their mouth doesn't support or stand with the 66 book. They can tell you God is saying he's going to give you a big house. God is going to give you a black Mercedes. I met another clown who said that a, 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 past, a guy was standing there. I was there. And he had a very nice pen in his pocket. He said, take out the pen. God is asking you to give the pen to this man. They say, oh, he's a prophet, well-known prophet from Singapore. I have to mention Singapore. So who's a true prophet, man? So what are parents, what these parents are doing? What parents does? What you will teach them, they will repeat. They repeat the same environment, they leave. Prophets are not from here. Prophets are from mountain. They hear the voice. They transfer the voice. Are you with me? So don't don't just say anybody will come and say he's a prophet. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Me a prophet Sulagana, Prophet Sulam did. I need to qualify this person to be a prophet. What's the qualification? A man or woman leaves in the 66. That's a water, you know, deep sea. The 66 is a deep sea. Yeah. Under the depth of it, darker, they live there under the water. They learn to breathe there. They are, don't look like ordinary human beings. They are ghosts, but they carry the voice of God. Who, who are these people? They are here to witness that what has been spoken through Jesus is from above. Qualification of prophet. Okay, so I don't want to talk about other prophets. You know, it's very painful and I don't wish to talk about them. Some of them, or most of them, I know them very well, but I don't know what to say. I can't even say anything. They will hear my videos. They will hate me. They will write about me. They will mock about me. They will talk about me. I say, then just come and validate your position, brother. Come. Help me to understand. I'll be the student. I'll be your student. Tell me, teach me. But I met true prophets. Huh? I met one prophet from South Africa. I don't mind saying his name. His name is Sean Blicknot. One man, first time I saw a true prophet. I wish I could wash his feet. <laughs> I sit under his feet. And he prophesied over me and declared, I'm also operating from the office of prophet. But I don't go and say, thus says the Lord. Now I'm prophesying to you through the scriptures. I prophesy through the scriptures. This is what God is about to do. This is what he's doing. He's bringing this. He's bringing that. And the evidence are all in the scriptures. Several scriptures are there. Prophets are here to uh, announce and activate the promises and the events of God in the earth to benefit the kingdom of God. They are not bending machines. They are not here to tell you what you like. 
They're here to tell you what has been spoken. <sighs> you understand? So what we can discuss about all this stuff. Some days when we meet, we sit down, we dialogue, we talk. The, all, the whole fivefold has been misunderstood, right? Shepherd is gone, prophet is gone, apostle is gone, evangelist, and what else? Teacher. Okay? So, this is the last one for today. When the spirit of truth comes, information, spirit of truth is information, all information becomes revelation. He will guide you into all the truth, whatever has been spoken through the 66 book. He will teach you how to understand the 66 book. Why you need to understand? Activation. Activation. So what will happen? For you will not speak in his own authority, but whatever he hears, he speaks. Sorry, um, Hebrew. Huh? Um, the word of God is living and active, sharper than the two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intention of the heart. Today I end with this. Stay connected to the 66 book. The Spirit of God is attracted to those who love the Word of God. The Spirit of God is attracted to the those who have the love for the Word of God. Be very sincere in this place. Don't mess around. Just you don't understand, I'm fine. But say, no, I love the Word. I love. There's something inside that, but I love it. I don't know whether I, I will ever achieve and understand. But I love the word of God. Why? Not religiously. There's, there's life inside. There's something. There's a treasure inside. And I love it, Lord. Bring out the truth to me. Help me, this simple-minded person, to understand. Increase my capacity. And then, boom, he will come. Once he comes in, every word, every chapter you open will unveil itself to you. And no one can stop you. And let me tell you after that. Nobody can stop you. And that will affect every part of your anatomy. Every part will be affected. And you'll manifest this invisible God. But don't expect everyone to accept you. Many will reject you and refuse you. So it doesn't matter to us. It doesn't matter. You stay relevant to the truth. Stay relevant to the truth. The truth is the word. The one who lead you into all the truth is the Spirit of God. And it will be completely seen in you and me. Okay? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the Son, that's where we are. So we are, we are a, a design to be fitted within the Trinity. Trinity is an operation. To study operation, how things will be established in the earth. If you work in corporate office, corporate buildings, corporate organization, they will have structures, right? Now, this is the corporate structure of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Son area was messed up. So Jesus came and re-established the Son area to give it back to us. So where human beings, mankind are, we are within the Trinity, within the Son. So this whole establishment can only be done by the Father, Son in Jesus, the Christ, right? Father, Son, and the Spirit of God who will lead you, lead us into all the truth. Are you all clear? Good. Um, uh, I will pause. Uh, we can stop the recording now, but I'm going to let